2020 kind of feels like we haven't really been living. Um, yes, we were alive, um, but for many people, it felt like life, real living, was on hold. So it wasn't real living as we normally know it and understand it. And some of us were busier than ever, where other people were frustrated and bored. But whatever our circumstances and whatever we were doing or were able to do, it felt like we did it with chains on. We weren't really free. We weren't living life to the full as um, our normal expectations are. So, what I want us to think about today is, what does it mean to be really living? Um, is really living defined simply by our freedom without the things like COVID restrictions or the disasters of bushfires or a personal crisis? Where, where does the definition of real living, real life lie? As we come to these um, just first few verses, a few verses here in First uh, John chapter 4, it's just a short number of verses, but um, I actually want to focus on something even um, more narrow than that in a way, that the, the general focus in our minds will be that we might live through him. So it's a passage about God's love, but the whole point of it is that we might live through him. So that, that's central to what I want to say. And um, as, we, as we go through these first few verses here um, uh, about real life, I want us to think about um, uh, well, three headings. Come into his love. Come into his love. Grow in his love. And spread his love. Come into his love. Grow in his love. And spread his love. Let me read those verses again from verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. To do all that, we need to be living in his love. So let's um, think about our first point, come into his love. I don't know if you heard on the news, I think it was just last week, that a, man, a boat was found off um, one of, near the Sunshine Coast somewhere, somewhere up that way, Sunshine Coast, a yacht was found, it was beached, the engine was still running, but the only living thing on board was a dog. And uh, when people inspected it, they also found the owner's phone there. Um, only thing was, the dog hadn't been trained to call triple zero. <laughs> but other than that, they were very puzzled about what was going on. So the boat, the boat was running, the dog was there, the phone was there. Um, but Mr Simpson had been knocked over and fell into the sea. And he swam uh, about two k's to an ocean beacon. And he climbed up on the ocean beacon and hung on to it. And he put his hope in, a large, in the large ships, in the shipping lane. Um, he put his hope that a large ship would notice him. And so he used his hand to try and sort of um, imitate an SOS as he tried to block the light um, that was shining from the beacon. And I guess he was very disappointed when, you know, a, a big ship went past, somewhat in the distance perhaps, um, but it just kept on going. And that might have been really discouraging for him, and he might have thought, well, they didn't see me. It was a complete failure. Um, but unbeknown to him, he was spotted. Or well, they did pick up the fact that the light was flashing in an irregular way. And the big ship called in and a small boat went out and rescued him. Do 
you might be someone who think that God's like the big ship that just keeps on going by and God hasn't seen you. You may be disappointed that God hasn't stopped and revealed himself in some big and dramatic way and you've been waving your hands but nothing has happened. But the news is, from our passage here, the news from today is God has seen each and every one of us and he has sent Jesus to rescue us. Jesus is the rescue plan for you and me. And to turn away from Jesus would be like Mr. Simpson turning away from the smaller boat that came because he might have said to them, no, no, I'm, I put all my hope in the big boat. But the, the big boat sent the small boat. God in heaven has sent Jesus to come and rescue us. And Jesus came in an unassuming way and he came as a human um, to die for us humans that that we might live through him. God the Father sending Jesus, the eternal Son, into the world to die for us is the greatest definition of love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Verse 10 is wonderful news. It's amazing news. But there's also something in there that's an uncomfortable truth. It refers to our sin. Jesus came to die for our sin. And uh, sin refers to our moral imperfection, refers to our brokenness, um, it's part of our nature, we are born with it, and according to scripture this technically means that we are spiritually dead from birth. So while when we're born we appear alive, living and breathing and kicking and screaming and all that kind of stuff, technically we're not really alive, we're not really living don't have spiritual life, true life. So it's a little bit like being in lockdown. We did lots of things. We acted and went shopping and ate food and carried on business on Zoom or wherever. Um, but it's not like real life. So when we're born into this world, you don't really have real life. Yes, you are alive, but it's not real life, genuine life. True life, real life comes um, through the sacrifice of Jesus on our behalf and our faith in him. Scripture says that the wages of sin is death. So what that, what it, what that is telling us is that our natural de destiny from birth is that we will spend eternity outside God's love. And that's called death. Second death. It means that we are lost and we need to be rescued. So we're living death in a way while we're living and breathing and kicking. We're living death, but real life comes through what God has done for us through the Lord Jesus. Remember our key word is, our key phrase, that we might live, that we might live through him. Now you might be wanting God to do something dramatic and show himself in a dramatic way. But he has shown himself. That's the news. I want to say to you, he has shown himself in Jesus. He sent Jesus for you, for me, that you and I might live, truly live. Jesus once said, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death into life. Talking about real life that lasts for eternity. 
So the first thing I want to say to you, if you haven't already done so, come. Come into his love. You come into his love by accepting the offer that is before you to be rescued by the Lord Jesus. Come into his love through the Lord Jesus. What I want to say to you, if you haven't done that yet, is don't keep hanging on to your beacon in the cold sea, expecting the big ship to come. The big ship has sent the small ship, Jesus. Trust in what Jesus has done and come into the Father's love. Um, if you've already done that, if you've already done that, may I uh, suggest that you refresh your heart by remembering what the Heavenly Father has done through Jesus so that you might live. You know, tell me the old, old story of Jesus and his love. True faith, true faith never gets bored hearing the old, old story. True faith loves to be reminded of these things. True faith loves to be reminded and the heart loves to be reminded of the Father's love through Jesus for you and me. Refresh your heart and enjoy the experience of feeling in God's love, being in God's love. Secondly, grow in his love. Now, it's not explicit in, in these verses that we have before us, um, but I, I think it's a given that we have to grow in God's love. Think of learning to ride a bicycle, for instance. When you're learning to ride a bicycle, you soon learn that pedaling and going forward is the best way to keep your balance. The instinct is to stop and to put your foot down or something but the best way is to keep going forward and you learn to have balance. You learn to stay upright. So just as you and I come and we enter into God's love, we don't stop there. We keep on pedaling. We keep on moving forward so that we grow in his love. Jesus put it this way in John 15, which was mentioned earlier by Rob. Um, no branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So we've got to be connected and we've got to be growing if we're going to bear fruit. If you're going to have a fruitful life, be connected to Jesus and draw us on with the strength and the sap that comes from Jesus. That's an essential. You don't just start and then Oh, bend into God's love and then you sit down and stop. You keep pedaling, keep moving forward. And in Jesus, remaining in Jesus means that you can have a fruitful life, a rich life, an abundant life. As he said somewhere else, he said, I have come that they might have life, referring to the, people, the ones he came to save. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Or some translations say, have it abundantly. Jesus came so you and I could have an abundant, rich, and full life, which is true life that lasts now and forever. So real life, if we kind of follow that theme a little bit, real life is based on how, living real life is based on how well we are connected with Jesus how deep we are growing as disciples of Jesus. COVID took away many things. Things that we enjoy doing, and things that are good for us. But COVID could not take away what really counts, and that is our relationship with Jesus. COVID could not stop us from continuing to grow COVID can't stop us from our restored, growing relationship with the Heavenly Father 
virgins. If we focus on that, that is where real life is. The other things are just temporary accessories to life, great as they might be. So my question for us today is, what are you going to do this year to grow in God's love and experience more of an abundant life from a spiritual point of view? Maybe you already have in mind a new Bible reading plan. I came across an email and had some suggestions. I thought, that's pretty good, but I'd already sent out the other one. Um, so I might look at that email and say, oh, what if they've got some interesting Bible reading plans that, that people at EBC might like to have a go at? But yeah, what are you going to do to experience more abundant life? A new Bible reading plan? Or be part of a growth group if you haven't been part of a growth group? Even if we have to go back onto Zoom, worst case scenario? But be in a growth group. Put your hand up to serve in a ministry at EPC. Become part of a team. Being actively involved in, in the life of a church is the most practical way of growing. COVID did restrict us from doing that. It sort of isolated us. I isolated us for a while. Um, but we can still be active in some different ways. The important thing is remember that being together as God's people is really important for us. As it says in Ephesians chapter 4, from him, that is Jesus, the whole body, the whole body is joined and held together by every supporting ligament, and it grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. The best way to grow is to be together. Whether we have to do that online, in person is always better. But we do it together. So whether we can meet personally or not in the near future, keep pedaling forward and growing in the love that you have entered into. Verse 11 says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Calling us to spread his love. It's easy to be generous with something when you've got plenty of it. Knock, knock. I don't wonder who's there. Knock, knock. Uh, have you got some, a cup of sugar you could spare me? Yes, I do. I just happened to be down at the supermarket and repackaged my pantry, so I've got lots of sugar. You're welcome to some sugar. Knock, knock. Have you got some sugar you can spare me? A cup of sugar? Uh, actually, no. I, I'm, I'm almost out, and I've just got enough left for this recipe that I'm making. If you only have a teaspoon of God's love, you don't have much to give away, do you? The Apostle John here in this context seems to be pointing out or, or is, is focusing on Christians loving other Christians. That seems to be the main thing he's talking about at the moment. And he's saying that if I have experienced redeeming love, the deep love of the Heavenly Father through Jesus, or then I should love other people who are also followers of Jesus. And it's actually a sign. It's one of the signs of a genuine faith. Um, I might just go down to verse 12. It says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. So that is the context of what he's talking about, but I, I just want to take it to the, the next level, to a step further for the person who has not yet become a Christian. I want to extend it to um, people who are not at church, who don't come to church, don't belong to a church, and I want to do it in line with the second greatest commandment, and the second greatest commandment is, you know, love your neighbour as yourself. So when it talks about love and loving others, the next step has to always be your neighbour. 
whoever she may be, whoever he may be. If you have experienced God's love in your life, it's only natural that his love in your heart would make you start looking outward towards other people who don't know his love yet. In 2019, we uh, launched organic outreach and, and 2020 has kind of kind of held us back um, in, in, in many different ways and in sort of bringing that into our EPC culture. Um, it's happened in different ways but it's also held us back in some ways but um, it'll be good for us to refocus on, on what organic outreach is about, what are the key ingredients and perhaps the number one key ingredient could be this, making friends with people outside our church community and praying for them. Praying for them at many levels, but ultimately that they might find real life through Jesus. Real life in God's love through Jesus. Um, Mari and I have been talking about um, making a little card that everybody could have, so this is a, my first go at it. Um, but having a little card where you can write down the name of, say, let's say five people who don't come to church, who aren't Christians, but you write their names on the card to remind you to keep praying for those people. When we pray for people, God changes our heart as well as theirs. Maybe the first thing you pray for is that you might have a, a more meaningful relationship, a more personal relationship with someone. Because once that happens, it's easier to start talking about real life issues. It's easier to talk about deeper things and ultimately spiritual things, which are the deeper things. But it starts with loving, loving them first and praying for someone is a great way to love someone. It doesn't always have to be about matters of faith. You could say, I'm praying for you on this and that and this and that, but you're also praying for them, that they might enter into God's love and find real life. When you pray for someone, you're expressing God's heart. As you came in, I've noticed, um, put back the banner, um, be a positive influence for Jesus. So what, what might that mean for you in 2021? Well, after, you know, stage four lockdown, um, there is a community thirst for connection. People want to reconnect and, and be in community. So it's a great time for you and me as followers of Jesus to let people into our lives. It might be the time that they're most open to actually make a new relationship that means something. So not only let people into your life, but look to invite people into your life. Look to make new friends, even in unexpected places. And pray for friends, old and new. Pray for those who don't know Jesus. If you are a person who has entered into the Father's love, if you are a person who's connected to Jesus and growing in his love, you're going to be a positive influence without even trying. You're going to be a positive influence for Jesus because if you're growing in his love, there's something of Jesus will be obvious in your life. It might be the way that you conduct yourself. It might be your attitude towards disappointments. It might be just the way you talk, your language. And of course it might be the things that you tell people that are your rock and foundation. But it's so easy just to let the spirit work in your life and to let the love of Christ be evident in your life. That will automatically make you a positive influence wherever God places you. That's not hard. But 
we need to be growing. We need to be in his love and we need to be growing. Be an authentic person. Growing in Jesus and letting God use you to spread his love. The love that leads to real life. So where have we come today? Come into his love. Starting point. Come into his love. Grow in his love. And spread his love. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God who initiated our rescue. And Lord God, we thank you that you sent Jesus into this world, the eternal Son, in human form that he might represent us and die as a sacrifice of atonement for our sins, that we might be forgiven our sins, enter into your love. And Heavenly Father, we confess that sometimes we overlook the amazing aspect of Jesus coming to the world to do this for us. And sometimes we're looking for something with more razzmatazz, something that's brighter. But this is where your love is. And Father, we pray that we've grown a bit cold in our hearts that you would help us to grow and become fruitful in this life and Lord give us a real burden for those who do not know your love that they might come into your love and enter into real life life that lasts for eternity beyond the good things and the bad things of this life in Jesus name we pray